Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Today we will be discussing a case study that illustrates the use of fidaxomycin in Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. This podcast is graciously sponsored by Optima Pharmaceuticals and will be presented by Dr. Sally Alraba. Dr. Alraba is an assistant professor of medicine with the Division of Infectious Disease and International Medicine at the University of South Florida Morsani College of Medicine. Thank you. Our patient is a 69-year-old diabetic man with moderate chronic renal insufficiency with baseline creatinine clearance of 45 mL per hour and hypertension. Admitted to the hospital for abdominal cramping, diarrhea, nausea, and poor appetite four weeks after completion of vancomycin tapered dose for recurrent Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea or CDAD. The current symptoms started two days prior to admission and the diarrhea were also, was described as watery, non-bloody, and up to eight times per day. He denied fever or sick contacts. The patient's recent past medical history is significant for a community-acquired pneumonia about three months prior to this admission, treated in the ICU with five days of intravenous antibiotics, followed by oral levofloxacin. The course, however, was complicated by CDAD. The initial episode was treated with oral vancomycin 125 mg four times a day for 10 days. The patient completed the treatment as prescribed with improvement of his symptoms. The patient, however, was readmitted three weeks later with the recurrence of diarrhea, abdominal pain, and fever. The stool PCR for CDAT toxin was again positive. The patient was restarted on oral vancomycin and, after improvement of symptoms, was discharged on tapered oral vancomycin for six weeks. Importance of hand washing with soap and water was explained to the patient and his spouse. The patient completed the treatment as prescribed. On presentation with this episode, he was mildly febrile with a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit and the other vital signs were within normal limits. His abdominal exam revealed hyperactive bowel sounds, soft but mildly tender abdomen with no rebound tenderness. Initial white blood cell count was 18,000 cells per microliter and his creatinine clearance was close to his baseline at 40 mL per hour. Abdominal x-ray demonstrated normal gas pattern and no evidence of ileus or free gas. Stool PCR for Clostridium difficile toxin returned positive. Patient was readmitted to the hospital for his third episode or his second recurrence of CDAD. The patient was started on oral fadaxomycin by the infectious disease specialist. Patients who are at high risk for severe or recurrent CDAD include the elderly, the immune compromised, such as those immunosuppressive medications, or with an immunocompromising disorder, such as cancer, autoimmune disease, chronic renal insufficiency, or organ transplant recipients, and those with prior history of Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. Our patient was a diabetic elderly man with chronic renal insufficiency who had received antibiotics and developed recurrent CDAD. So the treatment option for our patient uh, in his first episode would include oral vancomycin or oral fadaxomycin. Trials had shown that the rates of clinical cure after treatment with fadaxomycin were non-inferior to those after treatment with vancomycin. For his second relapse, treatment options would include tapered vancomycin or fadaxomycin. Fadaxomycin, however, could have presented a better option given available data on lower rate of recurrence of CDAD as compared to oral vancomycin. Moreover, fadaxomycin regimen is simple, given twice a day in a 10-day course, which is significantly uh, less build burden and shorter duration compared to vancomycin, which is given for up to six weeks. Also, in retrospect, given that our, patients ha our patient had several risk factors for severe recurrent CDAD, it may have been reasonable to use fadaxomycin as first-line therapy with his initial CDAD episode. Again, this would have been supported by the two points mentioned above. Perhaps the most significant advantage that makes fadaxomycin a more attractive option than vancomycin in the treatment of CDAD is its narrow spectrum of activity, which is mainly against clostridia, in particular clostridium difficile. This characteristic addresses the main problem behind CDAD, which is disruption of the intestinal microflora. 
Regarding our patient outcome, he did receive a 10-day course of fadaxomycin for his third relapse. He recovered well and had no further relapses four months post-treatment. In conclusion, some points uh, to remember would be the following. Fadaxomycin is the first bactericidal medication to be approved for use specifically in CDAD. The narrow spectrum of activity of fadaxomycin spares GI flora other than Clostridium difficile and therefore addresses the major problem behind CDAD. Fadaxomycin is equally efficacious in comparison to vancomycin in the treatment of CDAD but distinguishes itself by significantly reducing the rate of recurrence, which is a major challenge in CDAD treatment. Fadaxomycin should be considered first-line therapy in patients who are at high risk of recurrence of CDAD, and it's certainly a preferred option in patients with recurrent CDAD. Here are some of the references used in preparation of this podcast, and for further information regarding the fadaxomycin use, the listener may visit www.deficit.com. This concludes this podcast. Thank you for joining us.